morning on this Thursday morning. Pastor Larry Allison here, uh, Gospel Light Free Will Baptist Church in Bon Terre. And uh, we're really glad you joined us this morning. Um, you know, we're glad you take the time uh, out of your schedule to spend some time in the mornings with us in these morning devotions, uh, get into some scripture. We have prayer together. Uh, I think it's just a great way to start the day. And so we're, uh, we're very glad you're a part of that, uh, as well as many others uh, that watch with us every, uh, every morning, Mondays through uh, Saturday. Hey, you that are reading the Bible through, here's your scripture for today, 1 Samuel chapter 10 through 12, 1 Samuel chapter 10 through 12, and New Testament, the book of Luke chapter 9, and by the way, that's where we're turning this morning, so turn there, Luke chapter 9, verses 37 through 62, verse 37 through 62. <clears throat> well, as we get into the scripture here this morning, I uh, want to read a portion of, of this. The title of this this morning is Don't Turn Back. <laughs> I don't know how to say it any uh, simpler than that. Don't turn back in our walk with God, our relationship with God, uh, the things we're doing for the kingdom of God. Man, we don't need to, in the last days, and that's where we are, this is no time to be looking back or turning back uh, or giving in or giving up. Uh, listen, we need to go forward uh, till the day the Lord calls us home. <clears throat> Look with me, a book of Luke chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses uh, 57 through 62. 57 through 62. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Hey, Jesus, wherever you go, I'm going with you. <clears throat> I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said unto him, <clears throat> Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. You know, Jesus says, he looks at a man and says, follow me. And the man says, basically, I will, but first, I need to go bury my father. Verse 6, and Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I'll follow thee. Hey, I'll go with you. But let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house. Let me go home and tell the family goodbye. <laughs> Jesus, I'm going with you, but uh, let me go home and tell everybody goodbye. And Jesus said in verse 62, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And suddenly you and me say, man, that's harsh. <laughs> that's hard, Jesus. Here's a man wanting to go bury his dad. And you're saying, let the dead bury the dead. There's a man wants to follow you, but you say, he says, well, let me go home and tell everybody goodbye. And you say, if he looks back that way, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. Oh, listen, there's a Bible principle here. And Jesus is trying to make a point. I believe Jesus is emphasizing here one huge spiritual truth. And here it is that there's absolutely nothing as important, nothing in our life, absolutely nothing in life is more important or as important as following and serving Jesus. Can you say amen? Just another scripture that kind of reflects on that. If we go over a few chapters, I'll look over about Luke chapter 14. Luke 14, verse 26. Jesus says something here that seems kind of hard. Jesus said in Luke 14, 26, If any man come uh, to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Well, man, that sounds kind of hard too. Jesus said, if you don't hate mom and dad and your kids and everybody else, you know what? You you cannot be my disciple. 
Now, what I think we, I think we can parallel these two verses because they're saying really the same thing. Jesus is not saying you ought not love mom, dad, your kids, and everybody else. Jesus is not saying you ought not go to the funeral of a loved one uh, or, uh, I believe, share with your family your ministry for the Lord and then follow Jesus. Here's what I believe these two scriptures are really nailing down a truth. It's a matter of comparison. When you, you compare that scripture about uh, hating father, mother, so you can follow Jesus. No, it's not hating them at all. It's just simply loving Jesus more. You got to love Jesus more than mom, dad, kids, and everybody else. You got to love Jesus more than the idea of caring for, uh, you know, burying a father or saying goodbye to a family. I believe we're getting the, the full emphasis of this scriptural principle, and here it is. There's absolutely nothing in life more important than following Jesus. And you know what I believe? If you follow the Lord with a right spirit and a right attitude, you'll still have time to do everything else you need to do for your loved ones, for mom, for dad, for your kids, for your family. Uh, seek you first the kingdom of God. And you know what? First, first, and then all these other things shall be added unto you. It's not like we're pushing them all off a cliff. No, you love Jesus more, and you love Jesus first. You know what? And Jesus will help you loving the family the way you ought to. Okay? So that's the principle here. And so we want to love Jesus more than anything else. You know, he says, any man, no man, having put his hand to the plow, what plow? Hey, we're talking about the gospel plow. <laughs> hey, those that get saved. They give their heart to Christ, and now they're going to work for the Lord. By the way, pushing a plow is never easy. It's work, but put your hand to the gospel plow and work for Jesus, okay? He said, but if you put your hands to the plow and you look back, if you go back, if you turn back, he nails this down also, is not fit for the kingdom of God. There's a danger of looking back. There's a danger of going back. Many a person has put their hand to the gospel plow and through a discouragement or maybe a disappointment uh, or maybe just the temptation. Uh, there are so many things that can come into play here. But nevertheless, whatever the reason may be, too many people have taken their hands off of the gospel plow and turned back. They've looked back. They've turned back. They've absolutely, many of them, went back on the Lord. And Jesus makes a bold statement. Man, they're not fit for the kingdom of God. Man, I tell you what, you need to be loving the Lord with all your heart. There's a day, listen to me, there is a danger in backsliding. There's a scripture back in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 14 and verse 14. The backslider in heart, hey, listen, it's in his heart, shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The backslider is filled with his own ways, and it's them ways that causes him to look back, turn back, give up, and go back. The backslider, oh, the danger of backsliding from God. There's another scripture found in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 24, Jeremiah 7, 24, but they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart. Remember the backslider at heart. He's caught up in his own ways. And here it says he's walking in the counsels and imaginations of his own evil heart. And what did he do? He went backward and not forward. I want you to get that phrase. He went backward instead of forward. He took his hand off the gospel plow and went back. Now, having said all of that, that's why I'm concerned about, listen, I'm concerned about never doing anything that looks like we're going back, <laughs> okay? Uh, our theme uh, a year ago was more of God. Hey, we didn't want less of God. We want more of God. Anytime you want less of God, 
stay with me now, you're starting to look back. I believe God implants within our heart a desire to want more and more and more of him. You can't get too much of God. Agreed? We can't get too much of the Lord. We can't get too much church, too much prayer, too much Bible study. We can't get too much of God. But you know what? Here's what happens. Today's culture, everybody gets busy, all caught up in the things of the world, the things and some of the things that they really, really like to do. And the things that you really, really like to do may not be sinful at all. You know what? Just like the scripture we looked at, the things that you may be wanting to do may not be sinful at all, but if it takes the place of loving Jesus more and serving Jesus more and doing more for God, you're looking back. You're not going forward. You're going backward. So anytime we consider letting up on the things of God so we have more time to be consumed with our own things, man, we're looking back. Understand? That can, that can go along with your, your times of worship, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You getting too busy for all them services? You better be, you better be careful what you're replacing God's house with. Because if you're doing something that's more important than coming to God's house, then you're wanting more of it and less of God. I'm just sharing with you today, there is a danger in turning back. Don't turn back, okay? Uh, you say, I'm, I'm too busy <laughs> to do all the things, preacher, that you think I ought to be doing. I'm just sharing my heart with you. I think you ought to do, be doing all you can do for Christ. And if you for a moment think, I'm too busy to do all that, can I, can I be quite honest with you? Then you're too busy. If you're too busy to be faithful to God, you're too busy. If you're too busy to seek God's house, you're too busy. If you're too busy to spend time in prayer and worship and meditating on the scripture and on the word of God, you're too busy. If you're too busy doing family things instead of godly things, you're too busy. Seek the Lord first. You know what he'll do? He'll add all these other things to you, and he'll give you plenty of time to do the things that you like. But put Jesus first. Can I get an amen? Listen, don't turn back. Don't turn back. Let's go forward. God bless you. Hey, you are, you that are going through the Bible, here's your scripture for tomorrow. 1 Samuel chapter 13 and 14. And the book of Luke 10, the first 24 verses. Luke 10, the first 24 verses. Hey, have a closing prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the scriptures that you laid on our heart today. And Lord, we see a warning here, a warning about getting too relaxed in our loving you and serving you and worshiping you and honoring you and walking with you. And Lord, when we start uh, turning back, uh, and Lord, we start uh, wanting less of you and more of other things, then, Lord, we start treading on dangerous ground. Lord, I pray somebody watching right now uh, may be at a crossroads. Lord, I pray they'll make good choices today, right choices, and they'll decide not to turn back. Lord, there's nothing back there uh, to help us, only things that will hurt us. Let us go forward, and Lord, and serve you well. Meet the needs of those watching, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great day. Hope you can join us in the morning.